All right, so what we did here, right? The question here was, Marco taped off Marco taped off four tenths of a wall to be painted. He painted three thirds or, or three tenths of a wall of the taped off portion of the blue wall. Okay, or he taped it off, uh, he painted it blue. The model below represents the amount of wall Marco painted blue. Okay? And this is what what it what it has, right? He taped off most he taped up some of it. This is how much he painted. And then this in the, in the middle it's going to tell us what the question is asking us, right? The question says, how much of the taped off portion of the wall does Marco still have to paint? So he already painted part of it. He still needs to paint this section right here. Now, we went ahead and we did, right? And again, you can do it in your journals. You can even find these even online. And you can print them out and you can shade them in, right? We, we created our own 10 by 10, right? We created our own 10 by 10. And we said, okay. This is four tenths, right? When it crosses with three tenths, this section right here, this little section right here that we that we painted a different color, this one right here, that is going to be our answer, right? We showed it twice, right? This is the one that they gave us, and then we created this one. Now, let's put it together with our actual algorithm, right? We're gonna follow our steps one more time. I know some of them kind of are falling apart here. It's okay, we'll replace them. Okay, let's take our algorithm. I'm gonna erase this one right here, the one that I created. It's not, not very straight, right? But it's pretty much mirroring this guy right here. Okay, we've got our four tenths. We got our three tenths all the way across. This section right here is what Marco has not painted. And we determine, right, just by counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Not twelve, but twelve what? Hundreds. This is our answer right here. Well, let me put it in purple since I'm going with the purple thing, right? Put it right up here. Here are my here's my answer. And it should be twelve hundreds, right? So let's take a look at the algorithm and we're gonna follow using our steps. Okay? So the problem was four tenths. Times how much? Three. Times three tenths. Yes? Let's follow our steps. What's step number one? Count my decimal values. We should all be doing this. If I'm writing, you're writing. Count my decimal places, right? How many decimal places do I have in the entire problem? Four. I have two. I don't have four. Remember, the whole numbers are not decimals, right? So I have one here and one there. So how many do we have? We should have two. If I'm writing, you're writing. So I want to see everybody write this example down so you can see how the model goes with the algorithm. Okay? What's my second second step, Avea? Okay. She's, she's thinking. What do I do next? I already counted my decimal places. What do I do next? Any, any zeros and what else? Ah, this is too much, right? I also remove much. What? Zero has no value. Zero has no value. What else? One more thing. My decimals. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Decimals, right? Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't need. I don't need anybody making any comments. She got it. So, decimals. Any zeros, right? And then what's my third step, Mr. Clark? What do I do? What's my third step? Are you listening? Let's make sure we're listening, my friend. What do I do next? Multiply. I multiply. What do I multiply? What do I have left? Four times three. Four times three. Easy, right? Four times three. Wow. It's 12. Is that my answer, though? No. What do I still have to do? I, I Mr. Bailey, what do I have to do? I have to add the Where do I put it? Right here? Right here? Yeah. No. Right here? Yeah. Yes? And that's my answer. And guess what? Doesn't it match my model? Yeah. Now, this is the only reason I don't like these types of problems because they mostly work when you have a 10, right? They don't work sometimes when you have like a whole number and, and a decimal. But it is a pretty good idea 
so we could see why when we multiply two decimals, right, and when we're talking about numbers that are less than one, why they come out to be less. Four tenths times three tenths, and my answer is less than both numbers? Remember, we're multiplying by numbers that are less than zero. So my answer is going to be less than what I originally started with. Because I'm just taking a part of that number. I'm taking a part of three tenths, I'm taking a part of four tenths, and I'm crossing them together, and that's what I get. That's what I have left. Mr. Blake? <laughs> I was confused um, uh -huh. because I thought one, it had to be um, more, mm -hmm. and I thought it had to have uh, one, it had to have the same decimal place right. as the thing, but right. apparently So not. again, did this help a little bit? Yes. Yes? yes. So again, when I'm, when I'm looking at my, my decimal and decimal problems, I have to look at the entire thing. Not just one side, not just the other, right? I'm not gonna have an answer yet, so I don't have, a, I don't have my product yet. So I look at my whole question, and I ask myself, well, how, much, how many place values in the decimals do I have all together? Even if I would have had zeros here, they count, right? In this case, I only had two. One on one side, one on the other. That's why I wrote down two and I underlined, right? Then, how Avea said, I take away my zeros and I take away my decimal. And then Mr. Clark said, then what, we multiply whatever we have left. And then Mr. Bailey added, don't forget to put back your decimal, Mr. B. And we did that, and it matches our model. Any questions, guys? Okay, Adias, go ahead and hit it. Uh, 